Hello everyone and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm Notorious Dub and with the recent changes and updates to guns in Valorant, it's about time we get down to doing a full weapon tier list. And this time I'm going to go into detail ranking every weapon in Valorant based on how the meta is shaping out right now and explaining why each weapon ranks where it does and the strengths and weaknesses you need to know to make the right weapon choice in each scenario. But before we get into that, do you find yourself struggling to win gunfights? Are you a bit lost on what you should be doing in game? Or maybe you find yourself stuck at your current rank? Well, don't worry, as our brand new hyper improvement system is specifically designed to solve these problems. At skillcap.com, you'll finally learn how to improve your aim, different techniques to win gunfights, and so much more. We have professional courses on every single agent, map, and mechanic in Valorant. This is also backed by top pros, players, and coaches to make sure you're getting the most up-to-date and accurate information possible. In fact, we're so confident that you'll improve using our system that we offer a rank improvement guarantee. Check it out yourself in the link below, simply put in what rank you're currently stuck at, and find out what rank you're guaranteed by using our system. So, what are you waiting for? Unlock your true potential and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcap.com. Link is in the description below. Alright now, first up, starting with S tier, the most controversial weapon in the game, the Operator. Where previously this gun would have had a tier of its own in the overpowered category, I'd argue now that it's tied for the spot of the best gun in the game. Now the nerf really just made the operator a bit more clunky, less aggressive, and more difficult to get multi-kills with. But buying the operator still makes you good for one, meaning that you can hold an angle and still have a great chance of getting a pick before the other team even has a chance to pick you off. And the 5,000 credit price range does mean you have to be really rolling in the cash to be able to afford armor as well as abilities when you're buying this weapon, and it puts your team at risk of actually breaking your economy. So while it's still the best choice for getting the opening pick, it does have enough downsides at this point to make you think twice, and really as an attacker playing with the operator, it's just not quite as good as it used to be. Also occupying S tier, with the recent buffs, we have the Vandal. Now the Vandal at this point has a 0.02 second slower time to kill when hitting the body within 15 meters, but at every other range the Vandal has a 0.06 second faster time to kill, where before the buff the time to kill difference has favored the Phantom. It now favors the Vandal. And yes, the Phantom does have a silencer that allows you to shoot through smoke without being spammed back as easily, but there is one thing that people overlook when it comes to the combat ability of the two weapons. The Vandal, at all ranges, takes 4 hits to kill to the body, and the Phantom, at farther than 15 meters, takes 5 hits to kill to the body. And with the recoil pattern becoming random and swaying left to right very heavily at random on the 10th shot and every shot after, the goal is to kill the person before you get past that 10th bullet. This means that with the Phantom you have to hit 50% of your bullets when spraying, but with the Vandal you only have to hit 40%. And the 10 shot spray pattern is almost exactly the same, but the Vandal goes slightly more vertical. So ultimately, it's just going to be easier to hit 4 shots in 10 with the Vandal than it is to hit 5 shots in 10 with the Phantom. And ultimately, for pure combat statistics, the Vandal outperforms the Phantom at almost every range and every encounter that you're going to run into. And next up, I think with no debate in S tier, we have the Judge. Now the Judge is one of the few guns that when the other teams hear it, will make them avoid that entire area of the map at all costs. With essentially the killing power of a fully automatic operator at close range, holding a close corner with a Judge can get you pick after pick without giving the enemy time to actually trade you out. This makes this gun one of the best defender sided guns on eco or otherwise as long as you're playing tight areas. And it's one of the best guns on attacker's side if you're playing Jet or Raze and you're going for a fast pick with your mobility. And finally, in S tier, the Sova main's love child, the Odin. Now the Odin has almost the same body shot damage as the Phantom and the Vandal, with a higher fire rate, high wall penetration value, and 100 round magazine, and a laser over recoil pattern. Now the Odin is a wall bang machine, usually taking 5 hits to kill through a wall, giving you almost a one third of a second time to kill through most objects. Now the Odin, with knowledge of a couple of common wallbang spots, stops early round aggression and stands up toe to toe with phantoms and vandals in a one on one engagement as well. And then moving on to A tier, at the top of the list we have to have the phantom. Now this gun is loved by most pros who hold or pressure sights instead of going for mid controlled and fast rotates. The phantom also boasts a faster time to kill at very close ranges and from there allows for faster, intense area multi kills that can change the swing of rounds. 
Now, while the Phantom is the spray weapon of choice, at over 30 meters, be careful not to get caught up in the common scenario where you need one more hit to kill the enemy, but you have no control of your recoil pattern at this point. By realizing that long range engagements aren't going to be your strength, you can take your shots, and if you don't get the kill, take some side steps to let your recoil reset and you can be safer and increase your odds of actually picking up that kill. And since you have the silencer that lets you spray through smoke without tracers, make use of that ability and spray through smokes as much as you can from uncommon angles. And next up we have the Spectre, the eco round weapon of choice for most players. Now with the 1600 credit price point, the Spectre dishes out a ton of damage for the amount of cost, and close range it can shred through the enemies fast enough to pick up an important kill to swap the tides of the eco round. Now, dealing 78 damage to the head and being pretty accurate while walking, the Spectre, in close ranges, can allow you to outmaneuver phantoms and vandals with near ease. But the damage fallout and the long range recoil pattern gets near impossible to control past 20 meters, so stick to the strength of the close range engagements. And next up, we have the Sheriff. Simply because the mastery of the Sheriff turns you into a threat on every single round of the game. And with a one-shot kill to the head from most rangers for 800 credits, the Sheriff can catch an enemy off guard and get you a quick weapon upgrade if you can find a 1v1 on eco rounds. Just be careful, because way too many people panic and start spamming that trigger gunning for those body shots to try to get them out of a sticky situation. But the Sheriff has a very slow time to kill if you're hitting the body, so even if you're under fire, slow down and make sure you click that head, because that's where the money of this weapon is. And next up we have the Shorty. For only 200 credits you can buy this weapon on nearly any round of the game and give yourself a fighting chance. Now before the nerf the shorty would have been up there in S tier, but at this point the shorty is much more balanced, but at the 200 credit price point and the ability to one shot enemy is close range, the shorty is an incredible choice for eco round defenders. Just make sure to play those tight angles and be patient, because you're waiting on someone to get close enough for that one shot potential. Now next in the A tier we have the Ghost, because for 500 credits it's a decent eco round choice, but also the pistol round weapon of choice for good reason. At 105 headshot damage from under 30 meters the Ghost will one shot in most engagements that you get into, and compared to the Classic, has a very accurate first bullet, and the left click spam is relatively accurate as well when compared to the other pistols. And on eco rounds, the Ghost guarantees the kill with two headshots and is accurate enough to play fast, take those strafe shots, and chip down the enemies who are just much slower with Vandals and Phantoms. And finally, barely hanging in at A tier, we have the Bulldog. Now this is strictly because of the 2100 price point, the Bulldog is the perfect weapon to pick up on round 2 with heavy armor to still be able to compete on round 3 against Vandals and Phantoms. Now this is not to mention that the 3 round burst can actually be very strong at lowering your time to kill, where you only need a headshot and one body shot for the kill at any range with the Bulldog. The 3 round burst also gets off the fastest 6 shots of any weapon in the game aside from the classic right click. This means that with some decent accuracy, and maybe even a little luck, you can do a ton of damage and pick up a few kills if you get the opportunity with the Bulldog's alternate fire burst ability. And starting off B tier we have the Ares. Now with a slower time to kill than the Spectre of the same price point and a slower movement speed, the Ares does have an easier to control aiming down sights recoil pattern, a 50 round magazine, and a high wall penetration value. The Ares can shred enemies through walls just like the Odin can stop early round pressure from the enemies. And can serve as that long range laser of a weapon that you sometimes need on eco round. This gives the Ares a fighting chance at the go to weapon of choice for eco rounds on defender side where most people are still going to prefer the Spectre, and on attacker side really the Ares is just a little too slow to make it viable compared to the Spectre. And moving on to the classic, we have one gun that some people are going to argue is S tier. Now the right click does give the classic a 3 round burst, which for 0 credits, gives you a budget version of the shorty with a slightly longer range and more random damage values. Now I'm not gonna lie, the classic's right click can sometimes be a bit too accurate and slightly overtuned for a weapon that costs 0 credits because getting headshot twice by a classic whenever I have full armor and a vandal is a little bit annoying. But the atrocious accuracy of the normal fire of the classic makes up for the strength of the right click. From past 20 meters, if your crosshair is on the head of the enemy, you're still rolling the dice of whether or not you're going to be getting that hit. So while the classic excels in short or medium range skirmishes and jump right clicking, anything from range makes the classic turn into an inaccurate pea shooter that really just kind of makes up for the close range power of it. 
And next up in B tier we have the Frenzy. Now the Frenzy has many of the same problems and strengths of the classic for 400 credits. You do get a slightly better weapon at medium ranges and a more consistent kill weapon at close ranges, but it does have a very hard to control spray pattern. Now with how much consistent kill pressure this weapon has at close range for 400 credits, you can make the argument for a higher ranking, especially since it fits the Phoenix budget, allowing the Phoenix to get two curveballs on pistol rounds with a Frenzy. The Frenzy just has too many options around the same or less price point that have similar ability. And finally, in B tier, we have the Stinger. Now with the four shot burst, the Stinger's mid range isn't terrible, and the fast fire rate and high mobility makes its close range pretty good as well. But the inaccuracy of the weapon spray pattern makes it where you almost have to aim down sights at anything further than 15 meters which takes away from your mobility, and you have virtually no chance at very long ranges versus a somewhat competent player. But that doesn't make this weapon bad. After all, this is the B tier, and most weapons in Valorant are surprisingly useful in balance and kind of have their place. But C tier is where we start to get into the less effective weapons, and I know I'm going to get hate for this one, but the Bucky belongs in C tier. Now with the right click of the Bucky, targets from 10 meters to about 18 meters are easily one shot potential and the weapon seems insane. And anything closer than 5 meters with the left click has a very similar effect putting people down with ease. But that range of too far for a left click and too close for a right click is deadly for Bucky players to fall into and ruins a good play far too often. But that fact alone wouldn't warrant the C rank. The weapon, honestly, just seems too inconsistent. Whether it's the random spread pattern or hit registry issues from the game itself, shots that seem like a guaranteed kill often turn into a 70 damage shot instead, which realistically for 900 credits just makes the gun a little bit too inconsistent when you need to be able to rely on something to get that kill in those ranges where you expect it to. And next, in C tier, we have the Marshall, where before the Operator was nerfed, the Marshall was a very good go-to on round two to allow you to have enough money for Operator and Light Armor on round three. The Marshall doesn't now allow you to do that with the Operator costing 5,000 credits. Now, the Marshall is still the king of farming enemies with no armor. You could still do the same thing with a different weapon. And with the meta now, after you win round one, you're buying on the second round to have the same weapon round three as a bonus, and the Marshall doesn't have a ton of value on that third round versus armored opponents if you're not hitting headshots. And if you are hitting headshots, then any weapon would honestly do the same trick. And finally, all the way down in F tier, we have the Guardian. Now this hurts to say because I do like the Guardian, I think it's a very interesting weapon, and it's in a very interesting spot because the 2400 price point and the recent buff gives it the potential to be able to compete with Vandals and Phantoms while still giving you the opportunity to sometimes pick it up on round two with heavy armor. But even then, the Guardian feels like a stronger version of the Sheriff. While it has a faster fire rate, you still have to fire very slowly to keep your accuracy. So all in all, Valorant is just a very fast paced game and the slow shot requirement of the Guardian makes it a little bit too weak at long ranges if you're not hitting heads too slow at short ranges when you're caught off guard, and still too expensive for eco rounds, and honestly just has no place in the meta currently. But ultimately, the meta, and the tier list of weapons is subjective, and these are based off of what we're seeing in the higher tiers of the meta today. And if you're finding something that works better for you, then feel free to run with it, and let us know in the comments where you would change up our list, or what you think about where we rank the weapons. And remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcapped.com. The link is in the description below. And before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those notification bells on, because we here at Skillcapped have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date with so you can stay ahead of the pack. And as always, I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us, and I'm Notorious Dub, signing off.